welcome to Stitch with Susie Floss Tube episode 3. I really am glad that you are back. If you are watching for the first time, welcome. Um, my name is Stitch with Susie in one word, Susie S-U-S-I-E, here on Floss Tube and also on Instagram. I post more regularly on Instagram, kind of day to day or week to week. Uh, bits and bobs that's happening stitchy goodness uh, stitchy goodness sorry and uh, so please do follow me if you're on Instagram um, to keep up on a more regular basis I do these floss tube videos once a month this is a schedule that works well for me and today I want to share and talk about the Jubilee and all things British but before we start I just wanted to give you an update on episode 2 uh, which was the Ukraine special that I filmed literally a few days after the war broke out. Now, um, <laughs> a lot has happened since then. Um, a family is safe. Uh, the family that we, we were kind of most worried about are safe. Uh, they're in Germany, uh, settling in uh, into a new life. They are longing to go back and hopefully they will be able to go back and be reunited uh, with uh, the, the rest of the family that had to stay behind. But um, other than that, things have gone really well on kind of my side for uh, fundraising and, uh, and I wanted to share with you uh, the progress that I have made on the Ukrainian flag. Now it's not a huge progress but I've kind of struggled because when I've st been stitching, I've become very emotional and just very sad. I've had to kind of learn to manage the, the amount of news that I watch because it makes me very angry. It makes me so frustrated. I feel as if I'm reading right out of a history book what's gone before and yeah, it's just really, really upsetting. Now, um, I'll, sh I'll show you in just two seconds. I really wanted to thank you all for your comments, beautiful comments, lovely best wishes and things like that, both on um, on here on YouTube and also on Instagram. Really appreciated them. I've read them out to my husband. Uh, I've shared with my children as well, who's who've, they, they've got friends there who are um, helping in one way or another. Uh, during this war so it's it's been a very personal thing to us so we've really really appreciated and I believe I have answered to each of the comments um, if I haven't and it's just that I haven't got round to it yet um, but last time I spoke about the um, the importance of showing solidarity to support Ukraine and one of the ways to support Ukraine was to stitch for Ukraine. There's hashtag stitch for Ukraine. Um, and this has been my, uh, this is how I've, I've joined in. And this is as far as I have gone, got. It's not, I'm not trying to do the shape of Ukraine. This will be completely filled with uh, Algerian stitch at the top of the blue and then the yellow at the bottom. It's just, that's kind of the, the edge. Now, I designed this pattern and I have added, since the very first day that I posted it, I've added a uh, this Algerian stitch um, uh, pattern because they were four crosses and I thought this is perfect for Algerian stitch and it gives it a different kind of feel, a different look and then, um, so there are two of this size uh, one with just cross stitch, another one with Algerian stitch and then I have also uh, done a pattern, I haven't stitched it, but I've done a pattern for beginners. So it's a much smaller pattern that require one skein of blue and one skein of yellow. No more than that. Um, uh, whereas this one will require three or four. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of bigger, you know, a bigger project, uh, more stitching. So the the point of that wasn't just to let's stitch for Ukraine and think about Ukrainians and um, kind of even pray, but only do that. This is a fundraising um, uh, pattern. So um, 
all the profits after my Etsy fees go to the British Red Cross Ukraine Appeal. And I want to thank you so much because so far in this last month, we have raised £470. Thank you. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So that's how I wanted to start because it's so great. It's just been so positive. The feedback I've had, you know, people are really great, grateful to support. So, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you haven't bought it yet, I will put the link in the comments below so you can just go and buy it from my Etsy shop. This is not a personal, I don't gain anything from it as a designer. The the 100% of the proceeds go to the British Red Cross Ukraine Appeal. So yes, again, a very big and heartfelt thank you for your support. Continue using the hashtag Stitch for Ukraine, um, especially on, on Instagram. Uh, it's it's the beautiful patterns that have uh, come out of there. Support Ukrainian uh, designers by buying their designs, they're buying their cross stitch patterns. Okay, so let's get on with our episode about Britishness and all things royal and all that. So to start off I thought I would share my whips with you but I thought I'm not going to share them all. I am just going to show share the ones that are British. Now the designers are not British but they are related to Britain and yeah. So I kind of picked and I looked and I thought, oh yeah, these will do really, really well. And the first one I want to start with um, is this beautiful, beautiful one by uh, Modern Folk Embroidery. And uh, this was designed for the 200 uh, years of Jane Austen. I don't know if it was her birth or her death. Um, I didn't check that up. <laughs> um, but it is, uh, I am loving it, absolutely loving it. Um, the bottom part is an alphabet, so I haven't started that yet. Um, and it is stitched on, it's either 34, 36 count linen. Um, it was an odd piece that I had that fitted uh, the, the, the piece, um, fitted the design. And um, it's stitched with, let me, so it's white linen and it's stitched with DMC 4240 variegated. So it's a blue, I'm sorry, the sun's come out, uh, blue and purple um, that doesn't really come out on the screen, but it is absolutely gorgeous and I'm really enjoying it. So it's a monochrome piece, but the variegation of the thread just adds that kind of other dimension. So I really, really like it. Um, I started by doing, and I'm stitching one over one, so that it's, it's really quite fun. And I started with two threads on the, the tree. And my goodness, it was like, ah, and I can't unpick it. It's too small to frog. So, so I thought, okay, I'm just going to do the tree. And then there are two birds here and I can't wait to stitch those. It's my, I'm keeping that till last, uh, on this part of the design. Um, and so the whole tree is two strands, uh, one over one. So it's quite, it sticks out quite a lot and it's quite full. So it's really, really pretty. I'll just try now. The sun's gone. So, and it, it gives it, um, you can't really catch it on the, with the light, but it gives it a really lovely kind of relief. Um, and it, it really sticks out. Then what I did, because that was, it was, I really struggled, especially like with the foot of the, uh, of the tree or some of the leaves it was really intricate um, so I decided for the houses to do still two strands because I like that full look um, two strands but just half a stitch and I actually really like it it's turned out and I thought oh well worst comes to the worst if I don't like it I can just go over it uh, with the, the you know kind of the 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 cross in the other direction but I really like it um so yeah that's uh, so that's in two strands 
uh, but just half across and then all the writing and I'll do the same with the alphabet is one strand but full cross and of, of course one over one um, so nice way to start with Jane Austen more Jane Austen to come so yeah so this is one of my whips um, I don't have a time by which to finish it it was an unexpected one in the sense that I did the stitching the Winter Olympics and and it had a new start the first I think it was on the first day new start and I'm like oh I don't have a new start that I really fancy doing at this moment um so I uh, went online and um, I'm not quite sure how I f what I looked for but I found this one uh, and I really really like it so got the pattern um, so that's on Etsy and again I'll put the the links below uh, to the different patterns and or whoever I talk about then this is a childhood favorite you probably know what's coming up I think I mentioned it in my uh, first video that I was going to be starting this um, and it is the Chronicles of Narnia this is only part one now um, <laughs> again I've gone and I've stitched on a very fine so 22 hardanger and that's a one over one again so it's it's very small uh, but I finished the first part a couple of days ago. Uh, I had intended to follow, it's a stitch along uh, from Stitching Book Club. And I had intended to keep up with it, but the war happened. And it's like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so the third part, he came out yesterday. And uh, so I'm going to be doing the second part and then it, then I'll do the third part. But this is just so pretty. I love the ombre. Uh, I'm not keen on ombre in general, but I really like this one. It's it's a very, very cute design. Uh, very, I, I love the choice of colours. I have literally fallen in love with that yellow. I've done most of the called for. I've just substituted a couple um, because I already had and it wasn't a huge quantity that was needed. But this yellow, I can't remember which one it is. I will... Um, put it down below and it is just beautiful egg yolk all oh, creamy yellow absolutely gorgeous so uh, it's, it's one of the new ones um so that's my uh, my two british whips now i i'm going to come back to um oh sorry one last thing i wanted to say about this pattern in particular um i had uh planned to stitch it anyway and the start of it was on the 12th of february and the 12th of february was my dad would have been my dad's 94th birthday so he used to read me the line the witch in the wardrobe the, i can't remember if you read me all the stories i think i probably picked them up myself and started reading them but he certainly introduced me to C.S. Lewis and uh, not just uh, the Chronicles of Narnia but some of his other books as I got older Mere Christianity and um, I forget some of the other names but uh, yeah so I so this was kind of really a very precious plan a very precious uh, design that I would start on his birthday uh, and I stitched all day and and just thought about him and uh, yeah so it was really lovely so that's the um, the second whip British whip uh, so right now I would like to share with you some of my FFOs and the first one all three are from a uh, stitching book club and the first one is A Christmas Carol by, uh, again, Sitting Book Club, but A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And this was a short uh, uh, st uh, stitch along just before Christmas 2020. Now, the full pattern I will show here um, has, th there's a lot more to the pattern but as I was stitching it I actually really really liked it as is so we started from the middle and then went out and I just stopped because I 
really liked it. It's on now. I don't have the um, the, the stitching number, but they're usually twenty eight, maybe thirty. I don't know count um, and I've realized as well that all of them are on linen or even weave still figuring out the difference and I know I said before that I stitched mostly on Ada and then I realized that I've done quite a few pieces on not Ada uh, so the three that I'm going to show you are not at all on Ada um, but hey you know um so what i did and and this is something that i do regularly is that i'll change the stitches i'll keep the design but i change the stitches so like um for these ones i put algerian stitches instead of just the crosses um i think these were also cross stitches and these little ones so i just used a ray stitch on that and and here as well in the center use the ray stitch uh, I really like you know that's where I don't I'm not designing it I'm not changing the design um rarely the colors I'll just kind of go approximately for the called for colors uh, but I just changed the stitches just because it makes it a little bit more interesting um so yeah so this one uh, and this is a properly finished hoop <laughs> there uh you know this is I, I do it with um, felt. I put white felt behind the project and then uh, inside the hoop and then I put felt on the outside and just do a blanket stitch and then I always add this little label, handmade with love. Uh, except that I didn't give that one, I just kept it for me. Um, it's pretty. So that's the first one. Then, and I'm working backwards in projects here. Uh, so that was December 2020. Then I did the Sense and Sensibility, also Stitching Book Club, and I think that was January 2020, or, or maybe, oh, forgive me, it might be the wrong time, it doesn't really matter. And again, I don't think I've finished it completely, I stopped it where I liked it. Um, this one, instead of, right, this is... Instead of using with these white ones should have all been uh, crosses. I did all of them of them French knots, and I spoke in my very first episode about doing the same for uh, Little Women, um, and I really shot my foot myself in the foot for that one. Um, but I will come back to that because I've had a different idea uh, to, and I think I'll like it a lot more. Anyway that's an, another episode uh, but this one yeah so I love the French knots on here uh, and and it's on a very light blue um, I think this one was two over two yeah this is two over two uh, and very very light blue uh, even weave um, that I had in my stash so uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, if I'm just going to frame it, or... I still don't know. We'll see. Anyway. <laughs> then, this is... This was my very, very first stitch along. Now, there's a reason why it's not... It's not an FFO. It's not really finished. Well, it's finished stitching, and it's ready to go to the States. Uh, the pandemic happened, so it didn't go earlier. And I'm not sending this in the post. And this was the very first stitch along from Stitching Book Club. And it's Pride and Prejudice. And I loved it. This piece I stitched during my master's dissertation. So this was the only piece I stitched uh, during that time. And so it has very positive, uh, like, memories linked to it I love the colors I said never done a stitch along never heard of it uh, I'd never done I mean it's library I'm a librarian I've never been in a, in a book club figure out go figure you know <laughs> uh, but this one I joined it was like oh wow yeah pride and prejudice I love and I love stitching and I love books and why not be in a book club so uh yeah so this is just a piece that I really really like I did that on white that two over two and again I don't know if you can see in some areas sorry in some areas there I have just 
changed the cross stitch to a ray stitch. I saw another stitcher doing that on the um, Stitching Book Club on the Instagram group and I thought, oh wow, that looks really cool. So I'm going to do it. Um, so I really love it and that is going to go to America. It's going to go to my sister-in-law who absolutely adores uh, Pride and Prejudice and hopefully this summer we can finally go um, we're just waiting to wait uh, to hear on uh, approval of leave both my husband and I and uh, to finally see his family after three years um, we were going to go for the birth of the baby uh, two years ago nearly <laughs> and of course with the pandemic that didn't happen um, so yeah so I'm really proud of that piece and that was also very first piece that I did on even weave uh, or non-ada um, uh, fabric and I love it I just really really love it um, so I'm looking forward to, give it to giving it to her but also I didn't want to frame it here because it's cheaper to, to frame in the States and I don't know what kind of frame she wants so she can do that herself uh, I've done all the hard work of the stitching <laughs> so those are my British oh, British themed uh, fin final um, uh, my FFO so final finished object uh yeah so i hope you really enjoyed that next is the book review Woo now when i did my very first episode i asked you if you would be interested in having a book review um because i'm a librarian i love books but i kind of want to marry the two and and I got some very positive feedback and said yeah good that would be a really good idea to do a book review so my very first book review let's see how it goes now I wanted to start at the beginning what brought me into loving textiles, loving uh, design, loving um, anything that had to do with like embroidery and lace and all that beautiful, beautiful world. And I kind of was kind of really thinking about it and realised that it all came from this book. Now, it's out of print, but uh, you still can get it on eBay. Uh, I have come across a few copies of, of, of this book and this book belonged to my grandmother who gave it to my mother who gave it to me and I, I mean it's a really thick book uh, it was printed in the 30s I think no late 20s early 1930s and I remember as a child looking through this book and being so taken up with all these beautiful uh, like drawings and and sketches and so I thought I'll just show you a few um, of the sources of it's not inspiration as in I've then gone and designed something about with with it but just pictures that I loved and that when I look at now just warm my heart and it's like oh it's so cute so pretty so aspirational so this was something that I found very very lovely um the little cape uh she just looks like a little doll uh i guess it might have reminded me of little red riding hood um i loved fairy tales i still love fairy tales <laughs> um so this was yeah so this was one of the designs that i really found inspiration for and then the next one I think that was this was girlhood and this was for me what womanhood looked looked like lingerie and very pretty uh, you know prettily designed and stitched embroidered decorated uh, styles of, of clothing uh, not that I've ever worn anything like it I would be just so uncomfortable for me it's cotton 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 stretchy cotton this for me was the epitome of womanhood it's something to aspire to um, 
course, 1920s style. And then these were other objects uh, that you would, you know, stitch for your bottom drawer. And I love the idea of the bottom drawer. Uh, so, yeah, so that was another um, design that I had a kind of page I wanted to share with you. And then finally, these little bags. Look at how cute they are. You know, just imagine. I mean, they're not practical at all. Um, tote bag, you know, need a tote bag for because everything fits into it. But it's just so pretty. Really, really pretty. Um, and, I mean, this is all in the embroidery section. The, there are other parts uh, of, uh, like, children's gar garments, uh, simple dressmaking... Uh, new collars for old dresses, you know, make do and mend and all that. Um, how to use a sewing machine, some knitting, upholstery, uh, a layette for baby. Oh, you know, it's just, it's home. I think that's what it was. It just, it was home. That, it, it echoed home. And I love home. I love anything to do with home. So this is what started my love of anything textile and needlework. I didn't do anything until I was about 13, uh, cross-stitch wise. Uh, but I, yeah, I just loved it all. So where it started. Then, so that was kind of my love of everything textile. And then when I was 19, now I'd already been stitching for about six, six years, and I kept changing stitches for friends to give us gifts, uh, so I don't have anything from that era. Um, and I started, kind of, I, I would substitute things and change the colours, and I wanted to just do my bits, you know, kind of my own designs, and, and so I would use squared paper. And my mum bought me this book, and it's by Joe Verso. Uh, again, I think it's out of print, but you can find it on uh, eBay or second-hand book uh, shops like um, World of Books, Blackwell's. Um, and this started, this really started my design journey. It gave me confidence. It's like, okay, wow. I can do this. I can stitch something personalized for someone and I can choose the colors. I have, it was like it gave me permission to really get into it. And I refer to it constantly. I really do come back uh, when I'm struggling with a shape or um, proportions or anything like that. I come back to this book. Now, Joe Verso was someone who uh, was in the uh, Cross Stitch Guild. Um, I think she was chairman or she was in the kind of the startup of the Cross Stitch Guild. And unfortunately, she died in a car crash in the early 2000s, I think I'm right in saying. But her legacy lives on. It really does live on. And I love this book. And I learnt as well, you know, when you, you kind of... You cross it, you're kind of constantly learning. And I remember one of the things was the importance of backstitch. And I know there are loads of designs that you can stitch without backstitch, and it looks really, really great. But I like the detail. I really like um, to, I, I like things to look finished and polished. And I learnt this from Joe Verso. And I just want to show you, so this is the design, uh, the paper, the kind of on paper. This is stitched with just cross stitches, and this is with back stitch. And the difference between the two is absolutely incredible. And I have used this illustration when um, I've had people me email me uh, asking, oh, there's a lot of, I finished the design. Uh, there was especially one design, I had this several times, was the... Um, 12 Days of Christmas, it's a big Christmas tree with um, just loads of designs on them and um, it's still on sale in my Etsy shop but just as a pattern, not as a kit. And uh, somebody, a couple of people wrote, wrote to me and said, 
I finished all the cross stitch, now I've got to do the back stitch and it's such a huge job. Is it really worth it? And then I just send them a photo of this. And the answer I got back every time was, oh yeah, I'm doing the back stitch, absolutely. Because it really brings out the detail. It just finishes the, 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 the project. So that's why I use cross stitch in most of my, not my beginner beginner kits, but in the more, more kind of a little bit more advanced or brave beginner kits. I also got intermediate or brave beginner, beginner kits. I always put cross stitch in, um, back stitch to my designs because it just polishes it and makes it really pretty. So this is my two book review, there are two books this time, uh, and I have so many other books that I want to share with you. Uh, I hope it encourages you if you want to design, um, and you know, just be bold. These books are not very expensive, and they're really a worthwhile investment, but it's just really the, the pleasure in building your own confidence in... Um, yeah, if you, yeah, that's it. It's really building your confidence and anyone can design. Anyone can design. It's not just for clever ones or, you know, uh, anyone can design. And I really do encourage you to, to, to give it a go. I just wanted to also speak about French knots. Um, I had a question in the very first video, which I didn't answer in the Ukraine special. And it was, how can you frog, or can you frog, French knots? You can't. I'm afraid you cannot French knot, uh, you cannot frog French knots. My that's a mouthful. Uh, you just need to cut them out if you have got them wrong. Um, and just you, you cut them at the surface. So if you have your, um, you, you kind of raise your French knot and then just lift it and then cut it out. But before you go and do that, French knots are never going to be perfect, okay? I, it looks from a distance or kind of even a bit closer, it looks like, oh, really pretty, or oh, you, your, your French knots are really nice or, you know, actually they're really wonky. And I really would want to encourage you not to be too worried about how wonky they are. Now, as time goes by and you get practice, they become less wonky, but you still get an odd one that's wonky. Don't undo it. Just leave it. And unless it's really, really bad or it's really tangled, then in that case, remove it and start again. Now... You might think, oh, those are lots of French the French knots and that looks really lovely and so on. This wasn't my first attempt. Far, far from it. I spent a lot of time practicing. I would just get fabric, put it on a hoop and do French knot after French knot after French knot until I understood how it formed and how what I needed to do for it to really um, sit well on the fabric and look nice. So what I would encourage you to do is to get sharp needle and make sure that you have plenty of thread. Don't do it on short threads, do it on longer threads so that you have room to move. You don't have to kind of try and squeeze it in and just practice and practice on the edges or just take a scrap piece of Ada, a scrap piece of linen, whatever fabric, uh, a torn shirt, just the corner, st stretch it over a hoop and practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice, the more you will build up your confidence. And then you will say, okay, I'm just gonna change those few stitches to uh, French knots. Instead of a cross stitch, I'm going to put a French knot. Or I will feel confident to put eyes, to use French knots for eyes as well. So um, just practice, just do it. Don't be hard on yourself. If you've got, if you're grouping them, um, one thing I, I like to do is to do hearts and then fill them with uh, French knots. And that's brilliant because if there's one that's a bit too 
loose or whatever you can just pull the thread through and then kind of tighten it with other French knots around so don't be discouraged um, and just practice just do it again and again and again it's not something that comes naturally um, it's not like oh you've, you're so clever no it isn't about cleverness it's just about practice so yeah go ahead practice maybe you want to do it in contrasting color with your thread uh, with your fabric contrast contrasting color thread to your fabric so you can see really well where it says um and and what it looks like so yeah do practice and just continue and continue and last tip if you really really cannot get on with them if you really hate them use beads <laughs> as simple as that just swap them for beads yeah that's it and and that will give you yet another finish you will be catching the light also differently uh with uh, with beads um so i've never really got on with beads maybe i just need to give it more of a try um but i do love french knots so i kind of fall back on them uh quite a lot so i hope this little tip has helped you and um that you build your confidence up with uh french knots haul let's see what i got in my haul <laughs> i'm not a huge shopper except when it comes to books and my excuse is that i'm running a stitchy business so i need to have the inspiration i need to uh, do research that's my excuse anyway so anyway <laughs> the first thing that it's not a book as such it is the what is it called a sampler stitching notebook um, so as to keep track of uh, projects that I'm um, stitching. Sorry, those are, that's the beginning. Uh, uh, so you can kind of fill in the details, put a photo. And I saw Mama Loves You GB, Michelle. Uh, she got one of these. And so far, this is kind of the design that I like the best. Uh, not just the cover, but the inside. And I'm not very good at keeping things like online, it doesn't really, I don't find it very appealing. And I wanted to do it in writing, I tried my own notebook, but I just didn't get on with it. So I bought this, this is about, I think it was eight, eight, eight nine pounds on Amazon. I do avoid Amazon, but sometimes you can't uh, avoid it. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money just in case I didn't get on with it. Um, so I've started filling it in. I'm only planning to add designs that I have stitched that are not my own, not business designs, not models, uh, but just uh, uh, other projects like the ones I've shown you, the Jane Austen one and uh, Chronicles of Narnia. Um, one funny thing about it, it really it kind of, it kind of <laughs> made me feel a bit funny was at the bottom sorry I'm just going to try and show it to you here it says when I die I bequeath this sampler to dot 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 and I thought oh I don't want to think about that it's like I gift them when people are alive um if I'm stitching for someone else <laughs> someone else and then my children can sort it out whenever um when I die um but I, I don't know. I mean, I can see if you're stitching huge amounts and you, you've got like a whole gallery and and you've somebody has particularly liked a pro project that you've you've stitched. But I, it just made me like, oh, I don't know. It just I find it really funny. Um, um, I like the, the thought behind it. I do appreciate. But <laughs> anyway, so that's my first um, bit of haul. The rest is books. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm just got the, the giggles from that. I got this. I like William Morris. I uh, and May Morris as well. Just kind of the, the the whole their patterns and nature and all that. And so I saw this. I can't remember. Probably World of Books, uh, and bought it. And this has. So you've, you've got photos, a bit kind of dated, the, the, the style, I think it's probably from the kind of 90s. But um, but then you've got some really 
kind of the, the, the lovely designs shown. And then they, you have, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to find one where I can show both. Oh, I should have put a bookmark in there. So here, for instance, yeah. So here is a nice long sample, actually really, really pretty. And then you've got in the book, you've got the pattern for it like this I can't, remember. I can't see the, the way yeah anyway the pattern and um, and so it's kind of patterns and the designs taken and inspired from William Morris so I'm gonna want to explore this a bit more um, that's all in cross stitch no back stitch on that one uh, on these designs uh, but really quite unusual and pretty so I look forward to kind of delving in that a little bit more. The next one came from um, the V&A in London, the v Victoria and Albert Museum. And, well, I didn't buy it from their shop. I bought it secondhand somewhere else. Again, probably World of Books or Blackwell's. And I was looking at samplers on the website. And, and I thought, I wonder if they'd done any reproduction uh, patterns of the samplers in the in the VNA the, the sample the samplers that they've got uh, so I went online and I found this book so I thought oh great uh, let's have a look because sometimes I like say maybe just one little part of a design or I like the way a bird looks uh, and then I find that inspirational or an alphabet or something. So I thought, oh, if I have it, then I can just really uh, enjoy and, and integrate it into maybe some of the designs that I'm going to put together. So, <laughs> so I'm really, really hopeful. And then I bought it, I, I received it and then discovered that... It's just pictures of the samplers only. There's no patterns. There's no reproduction uh, pattern to stitch from these samplers. Um, so I was a bit disappointed. Having said that, they are very, very beautiful. And I'm going to contact the V&A to ask them if they have any, if, if any of the patterns have ever been made, uh, reproduced as patterns uh, from uh, the collection that they hold at the V&A um, and maybe I just haven't found the right book but um, so I'll keep you updated on that uh, if you like old samplers that might be something that you might like you know um, I'm not I'm, I'm not big I'll be very honest into old samplers and uh, antique uh, stuff um, but as I say, sometimes you've just got one design that is just exquisite and you just want to take that and then bring it into a modern um, uh, modern sampler or modern design. Um, so that was part of my haul and I found it really funny. Obviously it stood on a shelf and then it's, <laughs> it's just lost its colour along the side. Um, Pre-loved books. Okay. Then the last one I got, and this I got this on Etsy, was about British samplers because I have learned that there are so many differences between French, German, Dutch, British, Scottish even samplers and um, and I just wanted to have a little bit more, read a little bit more history about them. Uh, this one um, is, it, the pictures are black and white so not really that great, I'd love to see them in colour but then it's a book from 1948 so you know can't really expect anything else but it covers like early samplers utility and ornaments in sampler work uh the work of children evolution of the sampler color color schemes stitches uh future of the sampler so it'd be interesting to to read as i, say, I haven't had time to read it I only got this last week um but just to see what in 1948 what was their take on the future of the sampler so there you go. So this is my book haul. Now we're getting into the Jubilee uh, specials. And because it overlap, overlap, 
overlaps with Hall and Jubilee. So I went to the charity shop a few weeks back and I found something that I was not expecting. Now, as I say, I'm not into old samplers, but this one really caught my eye and it only cost three pounds. Now it's not extraordinary, it's not an antique, far from it, but it's a Jubilee one. So I'm hoping the reflection is not going to be too too bad and this and I'll explain why in a minute why I actually bought it and what it means to me so I just want to get it as close as possible for you to look so some are full stitches some up here for the writing here are only half stitches uh, and then I really like the details. I'm not sure what kind of fabric. It's quite a wide fabric. And um, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure uh, what kind of fabric it is. But it's it's actually quite nice. I really quite like it. <laughs> One of the things that I really liked is that although the Jubilee, this was the 25th Jubilee, the Silver Jubilee of the Queen, in was in 19... 77 whoever stitched it didn't finish it until 1980 so that's three years so I'm thinking oh well it's okay <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's not finished on time uh so that would just kind of made me giggle but to me oh I need to pedal back the jubilee 1977 I was six and uh, as I've shared before, my parents are British, but I was born and brought up in France, went to school in France and, and so on. But in 77, we spent six months in England, in Rumford, and I went to an English school and I loved it. It was the one of the best uh, memories from my childhood. I loved living in England and... It, during that time my dad was doing a lot of meetings and so he wasn't at home very much and I was spending a lot of time with my mum and I loved it. I really, she used to walk me to school. In France I lived close enough that I walked by myself. Um, uh, this is the 70s so it's not like it is nowadays. Uh, it was a lot safer. Uh, and uh, but mom used to walk me to school she used to come and pick me up we used to go to the park after school and it was such a positive beautiful time and when I saw this I thought that was a time when I was really close to my mom um, I can't remember if I called her mommy or mom or if I just continued calling her mama but I really liked it because it reminded me of that beautiful time that I had with her and she's going to turn 90 um this year and so I know that the years are counted uh with her and especially having lost dad uh last summer uh it's just made it kind of it's really hit home that they're not going to be here well she's not going to be here forever so this is why I decided to buy this piece uh, as a memory of the Silver Jubilee. So that's one side of my memories of the Silver Jubilee. I'm just going to put it down because I'm <laughs> it's going to fall otherwise. The other story, the other side of the story is that when I went to school, we went, we did this huge, well, it felt very huge because I was little, um, scrapbook. And there were pictures of the Queen that we cut out from magazines and newspapers and stuck in and the, the crown jewels and, you know, kind of, you know, the scrapbook. And I... Um, I love that scrapbook. We'd turn the pages and we'd talk about the Queen and royal things. I don't remember much, learning much else except that. <laughs> and um, I mean, I'm sure I learned other things, but that, that was the memory that stuck in my mind. And when I left, I left just before the end of the school year because the school year in France finishes in June. And of course, in Britain, it finishes in July. And we left in June, uh, went back to France. And you know what? They gave me that scrapbook. They gave it to me, little me, little Susie. I was shy. I was embarrassed at, you know, 
anything and they gave it to me and I was so touched and I was so oh I felt like I felt like a queen I felt like a princess you know and they had given me this book and I kept that book for years and years and then on one of our moves, um, I I threw it out because it was just falling to pieces. Unfortunately, I never took any photos, so that's a, a bit of a shame. But the memory was just really, really special. So that jubilee really stands out in my mind. So that's the 25th, 1977, 25th jubilee, or a silver jubilee of the Queen. Now, fast forward another 25 years, and we are in 2002. Now, I don't have anything from that time, but the memories are, and I'm gonna insert a photo. Uh, the kids were at school and uh, they dressed up as, uh, you know, it was like the 50s and anything that had a, uh, um, a Union Jack. Uh, and uh, and so the kids celebrated at school and I, I have these very lovely memories of dressing them up. I love to dress the kids up. I love to dress up as a kid. But then when there was a dressing up day at school, that was, you know, it was went into adulthood dressing up. And I, I really, really loved it. And um, but the weekend the actual weekend, June weekend of the Jubilee was when my youngest, who is now 21, will be 21 in a few weeks time, took her first steps. So uh, I remember her just toddling along the promenade in Folkestone on the, near the beach. And that, that is the memory that I have of that weekend. And we'd been for a picnic with some friends, um, kind of, quite a few families um, and uh, and it was just very very lovely and Lucy took her first steps so uh, that was really you know kind of really really cute. Now fast forward another 10 years 2012 where are we? We're in Ukraine we were not in England and we missed all that we missed all the, cele the kind of the celebrations here in England we missed the Olympics I mean we watched them online but it wasn't the same and um but we did visit on the uh, in the winter just before the jubilee so about this time of year uh, and we visited and everything had it was all vintage stuff and union jacks everywhere and and so on and I, <laughs> we popped into primark and we bought hats which we don't have anymore and uh, hats with a big union jack on for the kids uh, and then they picked and we I think we must have bought a dozen hats so they took them to Ukraine and gave them as gifts to all their friends so that was really really lovely but I didn't want a hat I bought myself a little cushion that I still have and I still use it on my my bed um, as I say it was it was from Primark before I knew that Primark wasn't very ethical or or anything uh, but I loved the flowers and yeah so that was my little thing um, I should have made it and that would have been even more romantic but I didn't I just bought it in Primark and I had it in in, in Ukraine it was my little bit of England um, and yeah, it was really, really lovely, and I still have it. And I and it has pol polka dots as well at the back. So and I love polka dots. Then I had uh, when I went to the charity shop and bought the sampler, nineteen seventy seven sampler. I also found a pile of cross stitch magazines. Now I don't usually buy cross stitch magazines unless there is a pattern that I really really like and I want to stitch and so I went through all these patterns and uh, all these sorry all, all these magazines and I found the t May 2012 cross stitcher magazine for the Jubilee and I thought oh this is really cute so I had a look through it and there was this but I wasn't really that bothered um, and then I saw this <gasps> make do and mend and I really liked it so I've got it it's a bit closer here mm, there and it's a singer my um, singer machine and yeah I really really like it I don't like this part sorry I should I should have said I really like the top part <laughs> um and 
I'm going to stitch this. I don't know which fabric. I've got a Confederate Grey um, even Weaver Tigart one, I think. Uh, so that might work, but I'll have a look at what I've got in my fabrics. And I'm going to also add Singer here. I think probably for copyright purposes they didn't do it because this is a Singer machine. This My grandma used to have this model and they put a cloth over the name so I think that might have been a thing with Singer but anyway I'm going to add Singer on here uh, so I really look forward to starting this and yes so I'll just do it to here and that is I'm planning to start that uh, on the Jubilee weekend in June uh, we get an extra day of bank holiday so uh, that's going to be my June start to kind of also celebrate uh, the jubilee uh, with a, a, a design that's not my own so this is kind of like the end of my haul and i'm just going to be back to talk about the my own designs my so before i go on i just wanted to remind you if you're really enjoying this uh, episode please like it please subscribe and turn on the notification so that you know when I uh, give I do another episode so right now I am going to introduce you maybe you've seen it already on on Instagram but I just wanted to introduce you here on floss tube to the two designs that I put together for the Queen's Jubilee now the very first one in the style of my little house collection is this one so this comes as a kit um, on 16 count Ada and a six inch hoop I was going to paint the hoop but then I thought not it's going to steal from the design now I do not finish my uh, my hoops because they're model hoops and I have to use them uh, often for more photography uh, so I don't finish them so that's why it looks a little bit messy um, now, oh, I know it's my own design, but I really like it. I love the Union Jacks. There's one for each decade. Buckingham Palace, super simple, super kind of downsized. Uh, but the guards are still there for the Queen while she has her cup of tea. Uh, <laughs> and then the balloon with the official logo of the Platinum Jubilee. And then these... Um, little uh the oh i forget what it's called but uh the, with the dates uh the initials and the dates now this comes as a because it's a special year we are never going to uh live a 70th jubilee of a monarch again even if you're a baby right now which you wouldn't be watching my floss tube if you were uh <laughs> um this is a once in a lifetime event and so that's why this is even more special um 70 years of a monarch uh, prince william if he when he becomes king um not if when he becomes king uh even if he does reign 70 years he's i think in his 40s now well i don't think he will last 70 years so in this country it's certainly uh, a once in a lifetime event so here official colors official logo official typeface uh, of the platinum jubilee uh, so this comes with the ada of course the threads the hoop the twine uh, to hang it uh, felt red felt for the back so that you can stitch it and then the little so I just need to put them next to each other these are button ups um, I'd encourage you to have a look online I'll put the link in the comments before in the description below and these are a super super nifty little uh, invention uh, my friend Carrie uh, started them off uh, they're a trademark uh, they're just uh, they're brilliant and I add them to all of my luxury uh, um, kits um, some have stripes different colors but Carrie put this especially for 
uh, the Jubilee hoop and you can hop you can swap the blue one or the purple one um, after you've put it on the wall so depending on your decor or depending on your mood you can change these so it comes up with the lovely button-ups um, and if you want to you have the option of adding a needle minder sorry <laughs> um, so one of these two needle minders these are ceramics needle minders uh, and they have a glass but button on the back uh, and you can use them as a needle minder, as a fridge magnet if you would rather. So if you wanted to send it as a gift, or you can buy these on their own, sorry, these on their own. You don't have to have them with the, the kit, uh, but they're just a bit cheaper with the, the kit um, just because they're included in. So, and these are the two that I'm selling with the Jubilee. Uh, polka dots for polka dot mug and then of course the Union Jack. I only have nine left of each of these so if you really would like to have one please 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 don't wait too long. Now I have also a little voucher for you if you are interested it's uh, launch 10 and um, I'll put the link below with uh, the link to the website is stitchwithsusie.com and the the code name as well launch 10 and you get 10 percent off any order uh, over the whole shop um, and because I've just launched my new website I should have probably said that before but it doesn't matter I launched it for the Jubilee hoops and and everything but that's just on my own website not on the Etsy shop um, so yes, so that's the that's the first hoop, and then oh, and it also comes with that little handmade with love uh, label, which I really like. So that the other one is this is the first time I have done a kit as a sampler, okay, or a bigger, or rather a bigger piece. I don't know if it can really be qualified as a sampler. I haven't read the book yet. <laughs> I need to read the book um, to see, you know, um, but it's it's a bigger piece. And it is, again, specifically for the Jubilee. I've uh, done all the research around the official Platinum Jubilee logos and uh, details and colours and everything. And I put this together and I really, really like it. So I hope you like it too. Uh, and here it is. Ta -da! So, oh, it has the four symbols from the four countries. So Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, England, and Scotland. Now, the difference with this is that I have used variegated green, if you can see, and I've designed it as a half stitch uh, for the shamrock. And then here, again, I don't know if you can really see, on the um, thistle, it's satin, uh, satin thread. Uh, and I just thought it would just give it a little extra um, and a little bit you know kind of a bit more special so here I'll show you this the two threads um, so the nice shiny uh, satin and then the variegated green uh, they're both DMC I have not got the number uh, the satin oh no the satin is the 550 uh, 550 satin um, but it's not actually I was quite surprised it's not the same purple as the 550 of uh, the normal DMC which is the one that I have used for the balloon or the and the logo so you can see the difference this one is a lot pinkier um, so yeah I was a bit kind of shocked but I thought it would work well for the thistle. Um, so here it comes with also a bunting ribbon because I just couldn't add it. It was just too busy. There were loads of elements that I wanted to add uh, to this 
uh, sampler and but it was just too busy so I just took loads away and just left it with the bare essential and I rather than write Ju Platinum Jubilee um, actually this was my husband's idea and he said why don't you write thank you mom uh, and so I've written it both on this one and on the hoop right here at the bottom thank you mum because she has served this country uh, Queen Elizabeth have served, has served this country for 70 years and she's sacrificed a lot and you think oh yeah the Queen she does whatever she wants no it's not like in the movies um, <laughs> uh, it's that there's a lot more to it um, huge responsibilities political responsibilities even though she's not uh, actually like a prime minister but um, there's a whole load of protocol and her life was never her own once she ascended the throne um, so yeah so this is my celebration uh, kits uh, the, the hoop and then the, the sampler uh, the, 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 this sampler doesn't come with the frame this is just a frame that I bought from Hobbycraft uh, it's a um, oh, I forget the name. Um, it's not. Oh, if you, I'll put it mm, to the side. Oh, it, the name's just gone from me. It's it's not a, f a frame where the glass is right against the the fabric. It's just got like a, it's a box like a box frame. Uh, and I thought I would use the black, but the black was too hard. The white just didn't make it stand out. But this grey one. I thought was perfect. It was nice and sleek, modern, uh, fresh, and uh, and I've got it in my haul. So this one also comes as the kit with the bunting. Um, again, sorry, this really cute bunting here. Uh, and it's on 16 Ada, and then the colours, the card will come, the threads will come on a card. Um, I usually I just usually do little sausages of threads uh, but for this one I will be doing it on a card uh, just because there are a few more colours and then with the satin it's very slippery as well so um, you can buy this kit on its own or with the uh, needle minders you can buy this kit on its own or with the needle minders uh, you can or buy the bundle of these uh, together if you would prefer and if you like both and decide oh no I'm really mocking this year I'm really going to do something for the Jubilee um, so I really really hope you like it uh, and this is just given me much much joy I started the designing in the autumn and uh, it's given me so much joy to design and then to stitch these um, to share with you to you know to celebrate uh, these so don't forget there's a 10% uh, off anything in the shop 10% uh, voucher uh, launch 10 I thought I'd do Jubilee 10 but then <laughs> But then I can never get the spelling right, so I thought, ah, oh, no, I'll just make it easier, just do launch, launch 10 for 10% off in the shop. I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sharing my joy of cross-stitch, my joy of books. Uh, I hope you've really enjoyed this episode. episode. Um, if, as I say, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And uh, follow us on Instagram as well uh, to see what happens on a week-to-week -week basis. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely um, kind of next month until I see you again uh, on here uh, with lots of new stitchy goodness uh, to share with you. So I will see you next time. Bye!